Life is easy for those who have an unconditional trust in the integrity of nature and a man. It's never easy for those who are far from comprehending this harmony. After all, their delusions can easily turn into cruelty. This is the conclusion I came to after finishing the Besatar story written by Skar Suleymenov. It got me thinking that in everyday life we never pay special attention to such concepts as man, nature or harmony. And it's only such stories that make us think about these philosophical questions as they raise our awareness and broaden our horizons. Are you ready to dive into a story like this today? Aynur Toleo, poet and a literary critic, Master of Humanities and Literature Studies, laureate of the Beam Beat Milan Special Prize, winner of the Republican Poetry Competition dedicated to the 175th birth anniversary of Abai. First and foremost, I recommend that you discard all the expectations you had about works of art. Besatar would take you to a different, wonderful world of literature. It would be great if you have some understanding of the 1916 Kazakh National Liberation Uprising, because the author immediately plunges the reader right into the thick of the uprising without explaining any historical references. July 1916. A national liberation uprising broke out in the Kazakh steppe. It was caused by the Tsar's decree issued on the 25th of June. The decree read that all citizens aged 19 to 43 were to be conscripted for the home front works to support the army. The document was entitled Regulations on the Requisition of Foreigners for State Defense Work, and according to it, in case of refusal, people could be sentenced to imprisonment, arrest for three months, or were obliged to pay a fine. Forced collectivization, deprivation of pastures, mobilization of men. What else had to happen that could force local people to start the uprising? The reader, when diving into the book, can find himself right in the middle of the events that took place a century ago. And this awakening is shocking. After all, not everyone is ready to suddenly find themselves in the last century bombarded by bullets. It's impossible to read Askar Suleymenov, and in particular his story Besatar, without certain preparation beforehand. And I mean psychological preparation. But let's refrain from trivial comments about how complex the writer's language is. Suleymenov just wrote differently. There are many works that are similar to each other which do not overwhelm their readers. They are easy to consume and therefore easy to forget. But this is not the case with Askar. His book can literally whisk your brain. Askar Suleymenov is a writer, playwright and critic. He was born in 1938 in the village of Shornak, Sauran district, Turkestan region. In 1959, he graduated from the Faculty of Literature and History at Abai Kazakh National Pedagogical University. His career can be divided into three stages. The first one was the literary criticism period, followed by the prose period, and his third period was drama period. Askar Suleymenov also translated several famous plays into Kazakh, Kabal of Hypocrites by Bulgakov, The Kai Men from Sichuan by Brecht, The Fifth Column by Hemingway, The Glass Menagerie by Williams, and others. In 1996, the writer was awarded the State Prize of the Republic of Kazakhstan. In Besatar's story, the author described the events of just one day in 1916. Only one day. Can you possibly fathom what the Kazakh steppe experienced during that period? It seems as the writer wanted to say, think for yourself, try to comprehend. Some hints are encoded in the protagonist's names. For example, at the beginning of the story, the readers encounter Officer Inazemtsev, who is traveling along the foot of Mount Kazagurt with a dozen punitive detachments. With his surname, the author indicated that the officer was a stranger, a foreigner in the Kazakh steppe. Then there is Turikhan, the protagonist who organized the uprising. His name is a derivative of the word Turiye which stands for aristocrat or Genghis Khan descendant. The name of Tari Khan's son, the 21-year-old Sarwar, also carries a symbolic meaning. Sarwar means owner and leader. With his name, the author wanted to say, Kazakhs are the masters of the steppe. 
Another distinctive feature of the Besatar is the fact that the story starts with a description of military clashes. It happened just after the Tsar's decree was issued, to which the steppe Kazakh, Torihan, reacted. In order to punish the organizers of the uprising, special detachment were dispatched. Those were ruthless people who did not spare a single life. Askar Suleimanov used to say, a writer is in his style, and his writings, too, were distinguished by his unique style. At the beginning of the story, the author made a small digression, preparing the reader for the transition to another time and space. And here is how he put it. In July of that year, from golden noon to brown evening dawn, from dark evening to pre-dawn twilight, something rumbled incessantly, breaking the silent dose of the hollow. The roe deer, full on juicy greens and the partridge swollen from the abundance of food, abandoned their pastures and nests. Sharp-eared fowls, which were barely accustomed to soft camel hair halters, were emerging from the water in one huge herd, galloping and breaking their fragile, thin legs. The writer had his own way of preparing the readers for the event, introducing them to the specific space and time. The stories would usually start with a description of nature. The way he wrote about the fowls, which were forced to adapt to new harsh reality, is truly touching. And this is how we return to the conversation about the unity of man and nature. There is this fowl, a child of nature. And then there are people whose destinies are cruelly ruined. Reflecting on this, the author prepared the reader for the further events. In the summer of 1916, a deadly lead rain poured from the sky. Speaking in Suleimanov's language, the bullets, as if alive, found and tore flesh, crushed the collarbones and vertebrae, sparing neither the old nor the young. The writer skillfully described his character's personalities. Take the moment where Torihan meets Inazemtsev, for instance. The captive officer knows that Kazakhs honor greetings and doesn't want to violate rituals. And when he stretches his both hands, saying, Assalamu alaikum, Torihan accepts his enemy's greeting, but he doesn't shake his hands as he offers the officer his folded whiplash instead. He cannot just ignore the greeting, and there is a certain subtext hidden in this greeting, where hands and whiplash cross. First, the instigator of the uprising Torihan takes in the of prisoner, and later the fate of Sarwar is in the hands of officer Kraike. Bisatar translates from Kazakh as a five-shot combat rifle. The writer Smagul Yelubai offered his own interpretation of the name of the story. Besatar was a bullet fired against the Red Empire. In fact, the theme of opposition to colonial policy was reflected in Kazakh literature long before Besatar. For example, Jambul Jabayev's sinister decree, Kenya Nazirbayev's Atan, Muhtar Awezov's vicious year were also devoted to the events of 1916. <laughs> You are the thorny reed, and I am the scythe, Kregel says to the smart Sarwar, the son of Turihan. The officer openly declares that for him, even educated, intelligent people are just thorns under his feet. And it makes Sarwar realize that his death is inevitable. There is another character in the story, his name is Mukagali. His dialogues with Inazemtsev can shed some light on the officer's personality. In one particular conversation, Batir mentions the ruthless reprisal against the Kazakh villages. However, Inazemtsev, although being on the brink of death, still doesn't want to admit how ruthless he was, beating women, shooting men, setting the old man's beards to the fire. He tries to justify his wrongdoings in every way possible. But his death is inevitable. In one blow, the mighty Mukagali kills him in an instant. In his work, the author managed to reveal the inner conflict of each character. 
Masilin. For example, right before his death, the captured Sarwar had his three sub-personalities arguing inside him. The story not only focuses on external events, but also demonstrates the internal struggle of each character. Here is Askar Suleymanov's book, Besin. I have also been interested in the story Besatar, which is a part of this book. I admire the original style of the young author, his broad outlook, and his prospects. I am interested in the story not because of what the author wrote, but because of how he wrote it and what this story reflects about the writer. Gabit Musrepov, writer. Now back to the Besatar story. Eventually, Kregel kills Sarar. For the author, this was not just a random death. The thoughtful reader will understand the implications hinted by the author in Sarwar's last words. Officer Kregel orders Galanoshkin to shoot Sarwar, to which the latter replies in tears, I cannot, Your Honor, I live on their land. The enraged officer shoots them both. When I wiped my blood-stained hands on my clothes, I heard a Mauser shot in Kazagurt, which was seen in the distance started swaying like a mulberry tree in a strong wind. It was shaking and something pricked in the right shoulder, making Kazagurt roar. Whether it was Kazagurt's roar echoed in the falls, nay, or was it Karala, I don't know. Karala is Sarar's horse. This animal is another important character in Askar Suleymanov's story, as it symbolizes the faithful companion, reflecting certain psychological meanings. The story has a small section called Karala. This horse has its own opinions and thoughts. We see how the horse appreciates its former caring owner, who would groom it and take care of his back, in contrast to the ruthless Kregel. Askar Suleymanov is an exceptional personality. He narrates deeply and skillfully, and his writings are one of a kind. Abishki Kilbaev, writer. Askar Suleymanov, Kazakh adibet negelgen phenomen. Askar Suleymanov is a Kazakh literature phenomenon. Many young authors who try themselves in literature admire him and even try to imitate his ability to juggle words. Makataev's Mozart, The Morning of the Soul, Requiem, was inspired by Suleymanov. Together with his friends and colleagues, he would often listen to Kazakh cues in European classical music, carefully analyzing these works. This was his way of shaping the preferences of his literary environment. Suleymanov was a writer who created independent and liberated literature. He cannot possibly read Suleymanov's books in a hurry. In his works, he admired his people and the landscapes of the endless steppe. The author wrote in three major genres of literature. Having started his career as a literary critic, he cultivated an exquisite artistic taste. But above all, he was demanding of himself. His prose and aesthetic works, Besin, Adaskah, Besatar, and Bolmuspian Bitpibit inspire novice writers to think and awaken readers to understand art. Dramatic dialogues from Kek, Yeruluk, and Turtahta Jainamas were warmly received by theater goers. In addition, Suleymanov wrote scripts for the feature films like Kulagir and Bayan Yel, as well as for the Arghamakhtar Min Adamdar documentary. His literary talent, which was manifested in this works, is a whole different story. With his titanic work, Askar Suleymanov was able to lay the foundation for an entire era in literature, and the story Besatar, which we read today, is a great evidence of this.